Good afternoon everyone. So from the last two classes I think we have been discussing uh, one of the place that you have been having a uh, that you have been prescribed in your textbook and uh, that is nothing but we are doing actually a play a one act play rather called a sunny morning okay so first class was an introduction and yesterday we have discussed some of the uh, opening uh, scenes of the play with respect to the four characters that we have so if you just try to recollect what all the things that we have discussed in the last class so i had uh, started off with the entry of the May, a female character that is the main lead character Donna Laura who was assisted by her maid and uh, she has just come to sit in the park on the corner of the park right then she was assisted because she was just trying to hide her identity meanwhile we also see that there was another visitor to the park who was none other than Don Gonzalo. So this man was also in his 70s and he was also assisted by his uh, uh, maid servant by name Ginaito and uh, he was a bit impatient for the fact that he did not get space to sit in the park and we see that he starts complaining about the authorities asking them to put more benches and all those stuff and they were also discussing about uh, uh, the weather that was there it was a lovely sunny morning or something that they were discussing and we also have seen that like you know Laura when she sits she starts feeding the pigeons she always carries the breadcrumbs and she you know, uh, feeds the pigeons nearby whenever she comes, I mean all the time when she comes and sits in the park and on the other hand we also have her uh, maid by name Petra who was very eager to go and talk to the god of the uh, park or something. On the other hand we see that Junaito tries his level best to find him a place but all in vain. Did he get a place to sit somewhere? No. Finally he had to come back to the same bench which earlier Don Gonzalo denied because he did not want to share the space with an old lady sitting on the other corner of the bench or something. Then he goes, tries to find out there is an episode of like three priests who were sitting and there was no more other space that was available and that is the reason that uh, Don Gonzalo had to come back. So while coming back what we saw that he when he was walking back to the same bench or something he actually scared away the birds that is the pigeons who were being fed by Laura, uh, Don, uh, Don, uh, Donna Laura. Why? Because as he was coming towards her bench or as he was coming towards the same bench because of not getting any space or something he scared away for which Laura got angry. And she said that like you know that he or his shoes were carrying a lot of dust rather than something that was visible or clearly visible in the park on that morning. So these are the things that we have discussed. So today let us continue and this is my class number 23 and today I am going to continue from the place where I had stopped the play a sunny morning by the Seraphin brothers okay so what we could see notice is that when Laura was very much angry on the man because he says that he had actually carries a lot of dust on his shoes or something why because she was very angry and uh, Gonzalo still asks have the priests gone away but Junaito says, no, they are still there, Sanor, that's what he says. And then he says about the authorities and all those stuff. And finally, he comes back to the same place because uh, he had to sit now on the same bench where Laura was sitting and was feeding the pigeons. So when he comes back, he comes back in such a kind of attitude that on the extreme corner, he sits indignantly and touches his hat to greet her. That is, he just tries to touch the hat and greets her by saying, Good morning. So this is the place where I had stopped in the last class. Now let us continue what further happens in the course of the action. <clears throat> what you hear again, I repeat that we have not met. 
so these who are talking here now dona laura and gonzalo are talking because now finally gonzalo had to come back and sit on the same bench so he starts talking to her what here you are again i repeat that we have not met he keeps on telling her that we have not met then laura says i was responding to your salute you wished me good morning and i was just responding to it that have you come back to me again or have you come back here good morning should be answered by good morning and that is all you should have said look at the way how they react how they converse with each other you should have asked permission to sit on this bench which is mine when he is asking like you know when gonzalo is perpetuated by his own ways of understanding on the other hand laura is also there who is also perpetuating with her own ways and willingness so laura says that you should have taken my permission before you could sit on this bench because it is mine then he says the benches here are public property that neither belongs to you nor it belongs to me all the benches in the park or something belongs to the public property he says why you said the one the priest have was yours look at the way you know laura says that you had said because she was listening to when these two characters were talking to each other isn't it before when they arrived when they first came to the scene isn't it so you said that the priest who are sitting on the bench you already had told that it was yours gonzalo says very well very well i have nothing more to say between his teeth senile old lady she ought to be at home knitting and counting her beads that is he's talking to herself by saying that saying that i have nothing more to say i don't want to talk to you anymore senile old lady that is senile is nothing but senora senile old lady she ought to be at home that is you are a very old lady and you should be at this time you should be at home knitting something knitting you know right what is knitting or maybe counting her beads that is you should be offering some kinds of the prayers or something sitting at home rather why are you here then laura says don't grumble anymore don't talk to yourself lord don't talk to yourself anymore i'm not going to leave just to please you don't worry about the fact i'm not going to leave this place just to please you that you will be happy if i go away from this place i'm not going to do so then gonzalo says brushing the dust from his shoes with his handkerchief look at it i told you laura had very well noticed at the first time itself that his shoe was carrying a lot of dirt on it so when he was there now he starts actually polishing the shoes or taking away the dirt from the shoes using a handkerchief he uses a handkerchief then if the ground were sprinkled a little it would have been an improvement that is if there was a kind of a rain or something if the ground were sprinkled a little bit would have been improvement that is maybe it was a sunny morning since there was no rain or something because of that my shoe has got a lot of dirt on it so he says that i wish it would have had rained then laura says do you use your handkerchief as a shoe brush she keeps asking this because she was surprised to see a man taking a handkerchief and using it in order to brush the shoes why not he says do you use a shoe brush as a handkerchief she keeps on you know asking the questions in in a so much relevant way that do you really use your shoe as a handkerchief then he says what right you have to criticize my actions who is asking this or who is saying this question gonzalo is saying who are you or what right do you have to criticize whatever the actions that i do then she says i have a neighbor's right who's the neighbor now don't think that they both are living in a place like you know i as neighbors no right now she is looking at that particular context and saying that i am your neighbor now because we both are sitting on a same bench then jinaito my book i do not care to listen to nonsense so he calls uh, his uh, maid or servant and he asks him to give him a book i don't have time to speak to the nonsense people then laura says you are very polite you are very polite is it isn't it ironical here so she is of the opinion that you are very polite you talk very politely she is being ironical here that's what you need to understand then 
Gonzalo, pardon me, Senora, but never interfere with what does not concern you. So he keeps on telling her that. I told you, what is the character of this man, Don, Ola, Don Gonzalo? Don Gonzalo was a very impatient man. He did not have much patience to listen to. That's why he keeps on asking or maybe uh, perpetuating in the same way like, you know, pardon me, Senora, please. But never interfere with what does not concern you. Please don't interfere in my actions. Then Laura says, I generally say what I think. I just speak whatever I feel like. I just speak what I see. Then Gonzalo says, and more to the same effect, give me the book Genito. So he keeps on saying like, no, I do not want to talk to the nonsense people or I do not have time to waste. He once again calls Genito and asks him to hand him over the book. So immediately the servant comes there. Here, Senor, Genito takes a book from his pocket, hands it to Don Gonzalo, then exits by right. Don Gonzalo, casting indignant glasses, glances at Don Alora, puts an enormous pair of glasses, takes from his pocket a reading glass, adjusts both to suit him, and opens his book. Now, this is a very important description here. Okay, so what is the age of uh, uh, Gonzalo? I said or what we have read in the earlier part in the discussion, he was also in his 70s there, isn't it? So, here Senor Genito comes, him, uh, comes to him and hands him over the book. After taking the book, Genito exits by the right side where Don Gonzalo's preparations are very, very important. What does he do? Casting indignant, indignant, unwilling, like, you know, probably uh, he was just trying to hide or something like, you know, so he unwillingly looking at or looking at Don Laura, Donna Laura, he puts an, an enormous pair of glass. First, he puts a spectacle and then takes away a pair, that is enormous pair of glasses, takes from his pocket a reading glass. First, there is a specs and then there is a reading glass also. So, just look into the picture that uh, uh, that is given on page number 34. So, first of all, he has a specs on his eyes and then he also holds a reading glass. So, he puts a reading glass, takes from his pocket a reading glass, adjusts both to suit. That is, he is looking at the book with two different lenses. That is what you need to understand here. One is the specs that he is wearing. Apart from that, he is also using a reading glass and he adjusts it so that uh, to suit and then opens the book that was given to him by his servant. I thought you were taking out a telescope. <laughs> This is what she says, like, you know, after looking at so much of fun or something, uh, Laura says that I thought you are taking out a telescope. Was that you? He's asking like, you know, did you say that? Your sight must be keen. That is, your sight must be very poor. She's being ironical, okay. Laura is being ironical on the actions that were done by Gonzalo. So, you are keener than yours is, Donna Laura says, yes, evidently. Then ask the hares and the partridges. Okay, ask the hares and the partridges. That is, he is just making a comparison to a rabbit and some birds. Ah, do you hunt? I did, even now. Oh, yes, of course. Gonzalo says, Yes, Senora, every Sunday I take my gun and dog, you understand, and go to one of the estates near Arawaka and kill time. Gradually, when the time goes on, okay, both the characters, Laura and Gonzalo, try to come together in the form of discussing some personal elements. That is what you need to understand. But on the other hand, both of them do not want to talk to each other, but it is the circumstance that is making them to talk to each other or something. Okay. So, he says like, you know, when he was saying about the sight, eyesight that was very keen or something, he says about the rabbits and the uh, partridges. That is the name of a bird. Ah, do you hunt? She asks. Yes, I did. I was hunting and even now sometimes I do go for hunting. Oh, yes, of course. Then he says, yes, Senora, every Sunday I take my gun and dog and understand and go to one of my estates near Arawaka. Underline the name of the place, Arawaka and kill time. That is, I do go for hunting, but it is only to kill the time or something is what he says. Yes, kill time. That is all you kill. 
yeah you are the only person one who keeps on wasting your time ironical she is being there then do you think so i could show you a wild boar head in my study so if you don't believe my words then i can show you in the form of a proof that i have hunted a boar a wild boar head in my study room study room is supposed to say there in my study room then laura says yes and i could show you a tiger's skin in my boudoir boudoir is nothing but bedroom it's a french or a spanish word what does that prove so when he when laura says i mean sorry when gonzalo says that i do go hunt uh, for hunting just not to kill time also uh, time but i have already or i have killed a wild boar and i can show you that wild boar's head that i have shot in my study room or something for that again ironically laura says that yeah even i also go for hunting or something and she says that i have tiger's skin in my bedroom boudoir is nothing but an example i mean the meaning of the word boudoir is bedroom what does that prove then gonzalo says very well senora please allow me to read enough of conversation so he just wants to come back to his studies okay i have discussed like the way he got adjusted to uh, study before the book that was given to him so i don't have much time to waste around here so please excuse me let me concentrate or let me continue with my study for which laura says well you subside okay carry on then he says then gonzalo but first i shall take a pinch of snuff before i could start reading before i could start reading i would like to take a pinch of snuff you know what is snuff uh, well i don't know what exactly you say it in the other uh, like a uh, pinch of snuff takes out from the snuff box will you have some snuff something that you take to the nostrils you know that is called as snuff so what don gonzalo does is that enough of your talk i don't want to talk to you anymore so please excuse me so that i can continue my reading of the book or something what he says so before he could do so he says about the snuff taking he was habituated to a one of the habits that was taking snuff onto the nostrils so he takes a pinch of snuff from a pinch you know snuff pocket from his pocket and takes a pinch and then he offers it to laura okay who was sitting on the same bench offers box to dona laura Laura says no did she say no no she did not deny it but she say asks if it is really good then i would like to take then he says it is of the finest you will definitely like it then laura taking a pinch of snuff it clears my head so she accepts the offer that was given by gonzalo and she also takes the snuff on to her nostrils and then it clears my head that is she says that yeah it is really very good then gonzalo says yeah even you have cleared my head also like you know he excuse me let me study that is what you say then laura says do you sneeze yes senora three times so after taking a pinch of snuff every time it was a habit of don gonzalo that he had to sneeze for three times and so do i what a coincidence underline that okay so do i that is both the characters dona laura and gonzalo have habituated to a kind of a habit that whenever they take a pinch of snuff both of them sneeze how many times three times that is what you need to notice so according to both of these characters this is the first coincidence that had happened between these two okay sneezing for three times after taking the snuff remember this okay what a coincidence then after taking the snuff they await this the sneezes both anxiously and sneeze alternately three times each look at it this is the first coincidence that happened between laura and gonzalo and that is nothing but sneezing three times so both of them were very ang- anxious after taking the pinch of uh, snuff okay once they have taken it it was alternatively both of the characters sneeze three three times each first coincidence okay then 
there i feel better that is gonzalo says after sneezing thrice he says there i feel better lor also says yes i do so do i aside the snuff has made peace between us underline that line okay the snuff has made peace between us that is the snuff exchange scene in the play becomes very very important okay so the snuff exchange has made donna laura and gonzalo to be respectable to each other all this while they were fighting isn't it all this while he doesn't want to disturb her and rather she doesn't want to be interfering with what this man does and all those stuff isn't it but when the matter of the book reading comes he had a habit and when the pinch of snuff exchange between these two characters it was a coincidence and it becomes a kind of a place where both of them try to respect each other or they are coming nearer or so that we can see that the say that this uh, snuff has brought a peace between us is what laura says you will excuse me if i read aloud so all this while he wanted to read he just wanted to read he did not uh, have time for uh, you know nonsense things and all but now he is asking laura that do you mind if i read aloud he is asking read as loud as you please you will not disturb me now laura also accepts that do as you wish or do as you wish that will not disturb her then gonzalo reading all love is sad but sad as it is it is the best thing that we know that is from campomar campomar is a name of a poet okay now he starts reading the book that he was supposed to which was about love and he read all love is sad but sad as it is it is the best thing that we know this line is from campomar this is one of the poets that we actually have so laura says exclaims rather saying oh really then gonzalo starts continuing reading the daughters of the mothers i once loved kiss me now as they would have graven image those lines i take it are in a humorous vein again he continues reading what campomar has written so what he has written the daughters of the mothers i once loved kiss me now as they would a graven image those lines i take it are in a humorous vein so i read it in a in in the form of fun humorous way that is i take these lines written by camp camp more in a very humorous way then laura starts laughing for that and she also says that yes i also take them so so this is the second coincidence isn't it so all the lines that were written by the poet camp more are a kind of humorous way for responding for both laura as well as for gonzalo getting following no so she says laughing yeah even i take those lines written by campomore in a funny way or in a humorous way then gonzalo says there are some beautiful poems in this book here 20 years pass he returns okay so as he was reading a poem okay as he was reading the book he says to laura that this book contains a very beautiful poems out of which there is one which is titled as 20 years pass he returns okay so underline that name of the book or the title of the poem 20 years pass he returns so i will stop here and i'll continue it in the next class before i could wind up i would like to tell you one more thing here that is what is the title of the poem that he was about to read 20 years pass he returns that is the title of the poem that he is about to read now okay so i would like to take you to the attend i'll take your attention towards the first question that we did on pre reading activity Do you remember what was that question? That question was how about meeting a friend after a gap of so many years. Isn't it? So that question and uh, the title that we are doing right now have one or the other kind of a coincidence. What is that? We will see it in the further classes of mine, but 
but I just would like to bring it to your notice that the title that is 20 years past he returns. So there is a poem that is the title of a poem that he is about to read and that is directly related to one of the questions that is given in the pre-reading activity. Okay, so apart from that, please make a note of all the coincidences that I am telling you or we are discussing as we are progressing further. The very first coincidence is about sneezing after the snuff exchange scene between Laura and Gonzalo. Then the second thing is that both of them are interested in reading and uh, their way of response to the reading of the lines of Campomor are almost similar. So, if Gonzalo is reading the lines in a humorous way, so as Donna Laura also reads the name, you know, the, those lines written by the poet in a humorous way. That is the second coincidence. And then the third coincidence that I am going to tell you is that he wants to continue reading for which he has come to the park. Who? Don Gonzalo and he would like to continue his reading for which he takes this book and opens a poem which is titled as 20 years pass he returns. So I'll stop here and I shall continue my next further action of the play in the next class and I hope that you all are understanding what am I discussing though it's a non-interactive class or something okay so you can just take in your own way about how you can take this uh, uh, play and understand you can take it as a humorous way you can take it in a fun you can take it as a comedy okay so we have all these kinds of the elements put together in this play so if you are very much interested keep reading and try to understand what is the course of the action that will happen in the play that is a sunny morning by seraphin and alvarez quinto okay so stop here we'll continue in the next class thank you very much